Hello, folks. I'm back with one more DevOps SRE interview question. This one is pretty broad, so you should pay attention because some of the answers that you're going to get from this question uh, can help you answer many other questions that might come up. Uh, if you like the content I'm creating, please like and subscribe. That helps me with my channel. And let's get started. Today's question, how would you design a highly available and scalable system architecture for a cloud-based application, considering factors such as load balancing, fault tolerance, auto-scaling, and disaster recovery? So what this question entails is basically for your understanding of a typical uh, web-based application that's hosted in the cloud. How would you go about designing at a very broad level, uh, considering all these factors, right? So let's break this down into all the key points that's already mentioned in the question, right? So it has to be highly available. It has to be scalable. It has to be cloud-based. Load balancing has to be involved. Fault tolerance has to be there. Auto scaling has to be involved and there has to be disaster recovery. So in the question to this, um, in the answer to this question, you have to touch on all these key points. And because this question is so broad, if you understand the nuances of these different uh, terms, that will also help you un uh, answer many other questions that might come up. So let's get started with those. So first key point was highly available. So what does it mean, highly available, right? What, what that means is that um, if you hit the service uh, a bunch of times, it has to respond to the user's request most of the time. This is where all the nines come into play. It, it would have, you will hear terms like four nines, five nines. What that means is that 99.99% uh, .99 of the time, the service is up and running. It gives the right answer. It doesn't fail, right? That's four nines. Anyway, the way to accomplish all that is basically you have to have auto scaling at um, all levels of the stack, application stack, right? So the main one being all your virtual machines or containers has to be auto scaled. So as as um, you ha you get more and more requests, this the capacity of the system automatically increases, right? Um, and as the request number of requests go down, uh, your your infrastructure, um, your your number of machines, for example, go down. Uh, it, it also helps to have a load balancer. In the case of AWS, it will be ELB. Uh, if you have load balancer, all the requests that come in can be spread in, among all your virtual machines. So that way, you don't have a case where um, you're overloading one virtual machine or one or one particular container. So that's just one part of this uh, answer to this question. Next one, scalable. Uh, in, an easy way to make it scalable is to use something called auto scaling that's available in basically all clouds. What it does is basically if you have, you can start with, with a minimum number of virtual machines or containers, let's say one, but as you have more and more requests based on let's say CPU usage or RAM, it will go up and it will increase the number of virtual machines as you need them. Need them. And we can talk about all of this in great details in, in another video, but um, you have to understand at the basic level of all it does. One thing you will notice is that a lot of these terms and features, they kind of overlap sometimes. So you will see that when you're talking about load balancing, you're also talking about fault tolerance and so on and so forth. So cloud-based means you're not going to have the infrastructure in your data center. It's going to be uh, either hosted in AWS or DCP or Azure, one of those things. And you're going to use many different managed services from the cloud provider to make this happen. Load balancing is helps you with um, scalability and also helps you with fault tolerance. For example, if we have 10 virtual machines or 10 containers behind load, a load balancer, uh, if one virtual machine goes down or if one container goes down, your service is still up because the other nine virtual machines or the containers are still working. That's one way to ensure you have fault tolerance in your architecture. Uh, again, it talks about fault tolerance, so you can just use the uh, load balancing um, strategy to make that happen. Auto scaling, we already talked about talked um, in already, so we don't have to go over that again. The last one is disaster recovery. Disaster recovery generally means in another city, right? For example, in 
uh, AWS or in the case of Google um, Cloud, you have the zones. In the zones, they're, they're not the, 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 the data centers in the zone, they're not very far apart. So they might be sitting in the same city. So if something goes wrong where the internet goes down for that city or disaster strikes in that city, you're actually out. Your service is completely out because all your infrastructure is in one zone. So generally speaking, you want to have multi-zone for all layers of your stacks. If you have virtual machines, you have load balancers, you have databases, you better have uh, one of each of these things, at least one of each of, each of these things in, one, in more than one zone so you're not liable to go down if one zone uh, is struck by a problem, right? Now, if you want to take that one level further, you can also have multi-region. That means that even the whole entire region goes down. Let's say US Central 1 goes down. You, have, you may have infrastructure in US West so your services are still up and running. However, uh, having your service fully disaster recovery ready for multi-region is very expensive because you're gonna have, um, for any given layer, you might have four or five copies of the same thing, um, same things in different regions. And on top of that, they have to be replicated across them. And that also get, um, is costly network-wise and application bandwidth-wise. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.